With Cars being Pixar's most love it or hate it franchise, you tend to see a lot of common criticisms. Arguably the most frequent one is the idea that this world that's populated by cars doesn't seem to serve much of a purpose within the story. Even I've brought that up before. I'm not exactly the first person to say that you could very easily tell this exact same story with humans driving cars and very little would change. What I didn't expect when I said that was that there was a significant number of people who disagreed with me. I really wasn't expecting this. I honestly just assumed that this opinion was fairly commonplace and that nobody would dare question me. So in the name of validating my fragile ego thinly disguised as healthy debate, I rewatched the entire Cars trilogy, including that one. Appreciate what I do for you. That's funny right there. And I was specifically looking for justification for this movie being built the way it is. <laughs> Okay, so looking at the first Cars movie, I think it's only fair that we go over the positives to begin with. One element that I really took note of upon rewatch, and also something that Pixar are often really exceptional at, is the character designs. A lot of their movies do an excellent job of taking non-human characters and designing them in ways that displays a lot of characterization and conveys the themes of the story. You've been jealous of my good looks since college! And with Cars, that same mentality applies. A lot of the characters have their personalities and roles in the world conveyed through the types of vehicles they are, as well as subtle details in how they look. McQueen, for example, is a celebrity race car, so he's designed to look sleek and flashy. And the appearance of the other characters around him helped to characterize him by comparison. Early on in the movie, we see him surrounded by other cars of all different types, from other race cars and similarly built cars to him who he enjoys being around, to utility vehicles who he tolerates out of necessity but isn't particularly nice to, to rusty cars who he… well… Ugh, I hate rusty cars. Cut to him arriving in Radiator Springs, and almost all the characters look completely different to him. They're generally older, run-down, or industrial vehicles, which communicates that Radiator Springs is a more old-fashioned, rural, and business-oriented town than McQueen is used to. This helps to tell us that he feels out of place. Albeit not as explicitly as McQueen himself. I'm in hillbilly hell! My IQ's dropping by the second! I'm becoming one of them! These designs are also really good at making these characters feel human while still sticking to that car aesthetic. We get characters like Mac, who's designed to have a high roof and sun visor designed to look like a trucker cap, or Luigi with certain vehicle parts designed to look like hair and a mustache. Hell, even a lot of the minor characters get this treatment, like Minnie and Van, who are presented as a middle class couple on a road trip. You know, the type of people that likely would drive a minivan. There are insects, which take the form of Volkswagen <coughs> beetles. There's tractors which behave like cows and are even designed to look like a cow's head, complete with nostrils, ears, and black spots. Hell, even this Peterbilt truck who's on screen for a few seconds is given a rusty bumper made to look like stubble, like what you'd see on a stereotypical trucker. It's an attention to detail that they didn't need to include, but it is very much appreciated if you only just TURN ON YOUR LIGHT, YOU MORON! The other thing that I have to really commend Pixar for is that even though they made a movie about inanimate blocks of metal, they were still able to get a fair amount of expressiveness out of them. This is probably the biggest point of praise I can give for the decision to anthropomorphize. The facial animation is honestly way better than it has any right to be, and in the racing scenes it makes the characters' emotions much easier to see than if the humans were in a tiny little windshield. There's also the fact that the cars have a decent amount of mobility instead of just stiffly sitting on the ground, and that leads to some decent physical comedy as well as some sneaky adult jokes that they wouldn't be able to do with human characters. Get a good peek, city boy. Hey guys, check out my Patreon for access to these exclusives. Link in the description below. So, with all that in mind, there clearly is a fair amount of creativity and spark that we've come to expect or at least hope for from Pixar. So, why did I say I had a problem with it in a previous video? That you should also go watch. Well, as much as I can praise Pixar's dedication to subtle details, that's kind of all the anthropomorphizing amounts to. Subtle details. There aren't that many instances where the characters being cars drastically affects a scene or the story, and so the elements I've praised don't get as much attention as you might think. And I can prove that with the examples that I've already given. 
Going back to what I said about the car designs building characterization, there's no reason why they couldn't do a lot of it with human designs. Like, a human Lightning McQueen could theoretically look like your typical young celebrity pretty boy and spend the opening sequence surrounded by other conventionally attractive characters. Then when he gets to Radiator Springs, that could be contrasted. Mater could be relatively pot-bellied and disheveled, and other characters could look older or have a more old-timey fashion sense. You can still show them driving cars and keep that as a major motif throughout the movie, so you wouldn't necessarily have to lose the design elements that are already there. Hell, I even thought of a way that this could enhance one of the characters. Halfway through the movie, it's revealed that Doc Hudson used to be a famous race car, but gave it up after feeling betrayed by the culture. When I finally got put together, I went back expecting a big welcome. You know what they said? Your history. And through McQueen, he rediscovers his love of the sport. Imagine if all the characters were human and Dog's arc was portrayed visually by him being the only character who rarely, if ever, drives a car, making it so that the few times you do see him driving, it displays a greater sense of character growth like he's getting over his inhibitions. Wonderful. But go away. And while I like the expressiveness and mobility that these characters have, it kind of just doesn't get used as well as it could have. While it is nice to see a close-up shot of these characters' faces during the races, the fact is that racing really isn't that big a part of the movie. 90% of the film takes place on a single straight road without much in the way of fast movement, and even in the more action-packed moments of the film, I feel like they don't do as much with the concept of living cars as they really could have. There are a couple of moments of the races that make use of the added mobility, but they're all really simple and really only scratch the surface. Imagine if we got to see more of that all throughout the racing scenes, and we got to see cars jumping and leaning all over the place trying to get ahead of each other. You might say that I'm nitpicking, like these characters being cars is just meant to be a bit of fun and I shouldn't take it so seriously. But I just find it strange that Pixar went to the effort of creating an entire world like this and they seemingly had very little justification for it other than it would be cute. It's especially disappointing since Pixar during this time were amazing at telling what if blank had emotion stories that served a purpose in the narrative and were also far more creative and funny. Not to mention, those were stories where it was absolutely necessary. Toy Story, the characters needed to be toys. A Bug's Life, the characters needed to be bugs. Monsters Inc., the characters needed to be monsters. Cars, it's just a normal story where the characters are cars because why not? Hell, I didn't like Elemental, but at least that movie's approach to this type of thing was more prominent and inventive. Cars is not necessarily a bad movie, but it takes a premise that, if nothing else, could have at least been a fun exercise in imagination and instead just makes it feel more like a gimmick. So that's the first movie. Not a great introduction to this universe, but hey, they've got two more chances to get it right, so let's take a look and see what comes next. <laughs> Cars 2 is one of the worst sequels ever made and the most baffling movie idea Pixar have ever had despite their seeming attempts to taunt themselves in the years afterwards. I think most people can agree that making a spy movie as a sequel to Cars was a stupid idea that in no way was a natural step forward from what the first movie gave us. In the original film, the idea of living cars at least fit the tone because it was a relatively low stakes story. Just a guy who wants to win a race and get stuck in a small town for a few days. But this is a high stakes action movie involving criminal organizations, dangerous conspiracy, and characters getting killed. The focus on characters that, let's face it, are designed to look like toys kind of feels out of place. And the sad thing is, I could see a world where this could work. I think if they leaned into the absurdity of the concept and found creative ways for living cars to be taking part in espionage, it could make for a good comedic spy film at least. But this is where the movie is really at its most bewildering. For how inherently silly this concept is and looks, they play it completely straight. I mean, sure, Mater is there to bring some levity to the situations he finds himself in, but that doesn't change the fact that the movie mostly plays out like a normal spy movie, just with cars with big funny faces as characters and we're expected to take it seriously. And in terms of car-related jokes, i.e. the main thing that could have salvaged this concept, there's honestly even less here than there were in the first movie. There's one moment where the villains are talking about an enemy spy they've killed, and it's revealed to be this. And for the life of me, I can't tell whether this is a joke or not. I mean, theoretically, it seems like a joke, and even a potentially funny one. 
but the moment isn't delivered in a way that adheres to any kind of comedic timing or direction. They just kind of show it and move on. That's a cube of garbage. And the rest of the film just consists of generic action scenes with generic spy gadgets and a generic musical score. I'm just kidding. The musical score is unironically way better than this movie deserves. Now, to be fair, the movie does introduce a couple of themes that justify the focus on cars a little better than the original. The plot involves the creation of new environmentally friendly forms of fuel and a villain league of lemming cars that are angry at the world for essentially leaving them behind. The world turned their backs on cars like us. They stopped manufacturing us, stopped making our parts. But first of all, you don't really need anthropomorphic cars to tell a story about sustainable fuel. You can still do that with humans driving cars. And secondly, while the movie does use the metaphor of living cars to vaguely gesture in the direction of topical issues like environmental pollution, systemic ableism, and access to healthcare, it doesn't really do anything with those ideas. The characters just briefly address them, but they never show any of these problems actually existing, and the movie doesn't seem to have much insight on how to stop them. They exist as plot devices and nothing more. So overall, if cars stalled at the starting line, Cars 2, unsurprisingly, crashes and burns. But there's still one more ray of hope. No, 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 no. While re-watching these movies for this video, Cars 3 was the one that I thought would have the best chance of doing this concept justice. The movie focuses on McQueen in the later years of his career, where his best days are seemingly behind him, and he has to figure out if he can still compete with the younger racers with their more advanced motor tech and their modern methods of training. Okay, yeah, conceptually this is a story that could work with this premise. Again, it's like what Cars 2 hinted at, with people who have essentially been left abandoned by a technologically evolving world and exploring ways to alleviate problems like that. And it's the main focus of the movie, which means, unlike Cars 2, it's got plenty of time to develop it. Too bad it, you know, doesn't do that. The movie attempts to depict McQueen trying and failing to adapt to new advanced forms of training, but he doesn't fail in ways that effectively tie into those themes. He's not failing because he struggles with the modern training he's being put through in and of itself. He's more failing because his trainer, Cruz Ramirez, is kind of just bad at teaching him at any kind of reasonable pace. This thing's only going like five miles an hour. We'll work up to the higher speeds right after you take your nap. The movie also tries to show McQueen learning to build his skills back up by going back to the roots of motor racing, talking with some older racers and practicing on tracks that Doc practiced on back in his glory days. But instead of McQueen going through much of a struggle during this part of the movie, the plot basically just meanders for a while without much in the way of furthering characters or the themes of the story, and without McQueen's abilities really getting any better or worse. And look, I understand that McQueen being unable to fully build up his abilities and Cruz being a poor trainer is kind of the point, and that it results in McQueen accepting that his best days are behind him and helps Cruz to achieve her own dream of being a racer instead of something she's not cut out to do. But that doesn't change the fact that for a good chunk of the story, nothing is really happening. Which means that while the plot is certainly facilitated by the fact that these characters are cars, it's still not really taking advantage of it. I really thought going in that this would be the film where I would be the most positive, since this is arguably a film that justifies the premise the most. Or at the very least, I assume that I would have more to say, but I honestly don't. I can't deny that there's at least a little bit of a purpose for these characters to be cars, but I also can't say that I'm especially impressed by the final results. And that kind of sums up my thoughts on the topic in terms of the trilogy as a whole. There's a little bit of a purpose if you really want to push it, but in terms of enhancing the story, it really just feels like the bare minimum, and in some cases it actively makes the story worse. Part of me wants to cut it some slack, since a lot of what they do with the concept, especially in the first movie, is good but it just feels way too minuscule for it to leave any kind of impact. That doesn't mean I hate this franchise, in fact I still think the first movie is decent, but compared to a lot of other Pixar movies it does feel a lot less thematically cohesive. All I can really say is, life is a highway, but god knows why. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters Heather Reed and Zelda, thank you so much for the support.